Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Solar. So today we are going to be building concrete ballasted ground mounts. Now these are going to be small ground mounts. They're only going to hold a couple residential panels each. But the idea behind this is it's kind of a, a semi-permanent installation. It gives you a little bit of flexibility. The, the concrete is heavy enough where it'll keep the solar panels firmly on the ground where they won't get flipped over or damaged in a storm but yet the concrete, it's still light enough where you could pick it up with a small tractor or maybe a forklift and then you could reposition them or relocate them to another spot on your property. It gives you a lot of flexibility on where your ground mounts are. So especially if you're in the middle of construction or if you're on an off-grid property and you know that that might not be the, the permanent installation and you may want to relocate them later, this might be an option to look at. So let's go ahead, we'll go back in time and I'll walk you through the whole process on how I built these. So I started off with some two by eight lumber and I cut that down to make the concrete form. Since we are lifting it with a tractor, I wanted the concrete to be thick enough that it wouldn't break being lifted with a set of pallet forks. After I got the concrete forms assembled, I took a two by six and I ran it through the table saw on both sides, cutting a 10 degree angle, making a bevel on the sides. That way I can easily remove this board from the concrete form later on, but these boards are what's gonna form the pockets for the pallet forks to be able to fit into. So after I got the two by sixes mounted in the bottom of the concrete form, the next thing I got out was half inch rebar. I'm gonna use this for concrete reinforcement. Hopefully this will keep the concrete from cracking or breaking in the future, especially if I'm gonna plan, you know, move it around with a tractor, I want it to be strong. So I cut the rebar to length and then I tied it all together. It fits perfectly inside the form about an inch and a half from each side. So now that I've got everything ready, it was time to pour the concrete. I did end up putting plastic underneath the concrete form so it wouldn't stick to the ground so bad. And then I just poured them full with bagged concrete using a regular concrete mixer. I think you can rent a concrete mixer from like a home improvement store for about 50 bucks. And then I've got about $40 worth of bagged concrete in each one of these forms. So after I had the form about three quarters of the way full, I would go ahead and take the rebar cage and I would set that into the concrete. And then I would go ahead and pour it the rest of the way to the top. And then I would take a concrete trowel and I would do my best to level everything off, smooth it out. And then after that, I would take a concrete edger and just go around to the edges. So after getting all three concrete forms filled up with concrete and all smoothed out level, it's just a waiting game, waiting for the concrete to cure. You don't want to handle it too soon because it, it could be brittle, it could break. It takes a, about four weeks before the concrete completely cures. But at seven days, at one week, it's cured about 75% of the way, three quarters of the way. And right now it's been over 10 days, so we're probably like 80% cured at this point in time. So I think we're good to go ahead, strip off our forms, go ahead, get our solar panel racks mounted up here, get our solar panels mounted and move these to their final spot, or at least their temporary spot. I did find this a little strange, taking off the concrete forms. I'd say half of my screws were broken off. So I don't know if that's from the weight of the concrete or if something swelled and they broke, but they're like three inch deck screws. I'm really surprised that many of them were already snapped off. And I know they didn't snap off when I assembled it. So it had to happen after the concrete was put in. So I still have two boards to remove in each one of these. We still have the, the two by sixes that are under here to form the, the pockets for the pallet forks. So I'm gonna grab the tractor. I'm gonna see if I can tip these pieces of concrete up on their side so that we can remove the boards off the bottom. Oh. 
Oh. Oh, we got it. Didn't think I was going to. There. Got the next one. So hopefully you can see with those pockets, I should be able to slide pallet forks through there and be able to pick this up and move it. All right, I got all the two by sixes removed from the bottom of the concrete. These are very hard to get out of there. I put like a 10 degree angle on these. Obviously it wasn't enough. Probably should have been like a 20 degree angle on the sides. And maybe I should have coated them with oil so they didn't stick as bad. Not for sure, but these, these were pretty tough to get out. So for the solar panel ground mount, I'm just using an EG4 bright mount. So it comes in two halves, uh, total length's 14 feet long, but each half's seven. And I thought this would work out really good. I think you could do it with several different types of ground mounts, but this, this is just what I'm using. So I'm gonna try my best to center this up on the concrete. We'll go ahead and mark out for our concrete anchors and we'll get it bolted down. All right, I've got all three ground mounts attached to the concrete. And now I can run and grab some solar panels so we can get them mounted up. I think we'll be able to fit two full-size solar panels on each one of these, total of six. All right, I've got the solar panels mounted on all three ground mounts. I think it all turned out pretty good. So let's take the tractor and we'll pick these up and we're gonna go ahead and put them in place here in front of the workshop. All right, I've got all three ground mounts on the ground 
and you can see this one is a lot different and that's mostly because the ground is curved right here as we look down you can see this one is more tipped right here and the rest ones are more laying flat so as the ground changes the it's going to change the mount you know it's not going to lay perfect and look perfect on this style of ground mount unless you prepared the ground beforehand and made a nice level surface to be able to set these on so when i laid out these concrete forms i wanted to make sure my bolts were at least four inches from the edge i think we've got about five inches from the edge for our anchor bolts and then this is 14 inches wide 69 inches long seven and a half inches deep so that's about 10 60 pound bags of concrete and that ought to weigh about 550 pounds that's a pretty decent weight to be able to hold just two solar panels and then once you add the ground mount and the solar panels the total weight on this is probably around 650 700 pounds so if i was going to do this over again i would probably make it wider than 14 inches just to make sure i've got a a bigger foot it would make it more stable front to back and the the fork pockets are way too narrow you have to have the forks the exact width you have to just hit it dead on and straight to get them in there so i would probably make the fork pockets eight to ten inches wide that way it'd be way easier to be able to pick up and move around so now that we've got all three ground mounts as close as possible to each other we can connect these solar panels in series and then run them back to our inverter we can put a ground rod on this end and ground this solar panel mount put a ground rod on the other end, mount, ground that solar panel mount, and then put a ground between these two and between these two, and everything would be bonded and grounded. You could also mount a PV disconnect on the back of one of these solar panel mounts so you can turn it on and off. Other than that, that's probably all you'd have to do, and then you'd have a working solar array. So hopefully sometime next year, we're gonna be digging in a sewer line from the workshop, and then we're also gonna be digging in a water line as well. So these will have to move sometime next year. That's why I didn't want them to be a permanent installation, but yet I still wanted to be able to maximize my solar and utilize all the panels that I have. And this is gonna work out, I think, good for me. So all I have to do now is I've just gotta run a conduit into the solar power room. I may put me a little junction box on the outside here to be able to plug these solar panels into. But once I get that on there, I can get these hooked up and start using them. But I think that's going to be it for this video. If you guys have any ideas or any suggestions for this, uh, put them in the comments for everybody to be able to read and maybe you'll give some people some other ideas. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time.